So it's been about five months since Pikmin 4 released, and now that the recency bias is settled in, I think it's safe to say that this game isn't perfect. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely adore Pikmin 4, but I couldn't help but feel that something was missing. A couple things, actually. But instead of bashing Pikmin 4 to the ground, we're going to move forward and talk about how Pikmin 5 can improve upon what Pikmin 4 tried to do. So that means in today's video, we're going to step away from the hyper-edited, dopamine-inducing, clickbaity, wing Pikmin inflation thumbnail and just talk about my hopes and dreams of Pikmin 5. Oh, and by the way, if you actually get turned on by this, seek professional help, please. It was supposed to be a joke. Anyways, in my opinion, the most disappointing thing about Pikmin 4 is its paper-thin story. The plot is so bland. Even an idiot could tell you this guy's Olimar. Plus, in this game, Louis dumbed down to a total dumbass. He had no motivations, no dialogue, no personality, and the rescue corps really aren't compelling characters either. I know Pikmin's never been a story game, but they made Olimar such a relatable and wholesome character in the first two games. Why'd they have to stop there? I think the best way to fix Pikmin 5's story is to make us play as an actual character. None of this silent protagonist bullshit. I like being able to create my own character, but it really takes away from the story's potential. Why can't we play as Olimar's son trying to rescue his dad or something, and like, he discovers the Pikmin as you go on through the story? The character needs some sort of motivation and personality, but instead, we were given a blank slate. Something Pikmin 4 did that I absolutely adored was introduce these modern human locations. The Blossoming Arcadia has a little slide in the background, Giant's Hearth has a barbecue and lawn chair, and the Hero's Hideaway is a full-on house. Not to mention, some of the caves have the aesthetics of an aquarium or a child's playroom, but I really wish they did a little more with this idea. A lot of the locations still feel like some outdoor open arena. If Pikmin now takes place in a modern, somewhat civilized world, I wish our locations could have been more diverse. I know I've said this a few times now, but a water park map would go absolutely crazy. Or what about a cityscape environment? Even if we wanted to keep things nature related, a jungle map where we could climb trees or something would be pretty sick. An abandoned desert village, a ski lodge, or even a fucking volcano. If Pikmin 5 takes place on Earth, which it probably will, I'd want to see maps with more personality instead of another open field of grass. On the topic of level design, caves. I love them in Pikmin 4. Some were puzzle focused and some were like a mini dungeon. And although they were a lot of fun to play, many caves felt the same. In Pikmin 5, if caves do end up returning, I'd want each one to have its own unique gimmick. The submerged castle is a perfect example. It takes everything you know about the caves and flips it upside down, completely changing the gameplay loop. Even in Pikmin 3, when we had to use yellow Pikmin to light up the Fosbat arena was a fun and unique gimmick. Another cave I loved was the discotheque. Not for the final boss, but for that one level where you had to solve a genuinely mind-boggling puzzle. I'm a sucker for puzzle games, so I really hope we get more of these in Pikmin 5, but not everyone is. I know some people who just want a non-stop combat cave, and that's fine too. So I think the best way to please everyone is by adding something fresh to the Pikmin formula. Cave Creator. I made an entire video about this a few months ago, and my opinion hasn't changed a single bit. I'm not going to explain how it'll work, because I already go through it in this video over here. So if you want to give your old pal Ragan some extra watch time, check out this video over here, but only when you're done watching this video. Don't kill my watch time. I think a cave creator is essential for the replayability aspect of Pikmin 5. Imagine the countless amount of things this game mode can bring to the Pikmin community. We would never run out of content. Look at Mario Maker 2. That game's been out for like 4 years now and people are still playing it religiously. My biggest complaint with Pikmin 4, and all Pikmin games honestly, is after you beat the main story, there really isn't much else to do. But if Pikmin 5 had some sort of cave creator, I strongly believe that game would never die. This next one's a write-off, and it's not just Pikmin 5, but pretty much every upcoming Nintendo game. Custom controls. Why can't we adjust our keybinds? Why can't I change the camera sensitivity? Why the fuck do they force me to use that godforsaken auto-lock? This isn't a Pikmin problem, it's a Nintendo problem. And speaking of a Nintendo problem, this kind of falls into the same category of customization. Why can't we customize the difficulty either? Pikmin 5 needs to have some sort of difficulty modifiers to make the game more enjoyable for a wider audience, that being easier or harder. But Nintendo always does this kind of stuff. They're a children's company after all, and they'd want to make the game enjoyable for as many people as possible. What I find more surprising though, is the lack of a co-op mode Pikmin 4 had. Especially considering the fact that Nintendo's supposed to be that on-the-couch, local co-op, play-with-your-siblings type of company, Pikmin 4 is primarily a solo experience. But don't worry guys, we have the Pebble Pitcher! <sighs> I really used to hate this thing, until I tried it out with Wigman and... Okay, it's, it's not that bad, but I swear to god, in Pikmin 5, if I can't play the main campaign along with someone else, I'm gonna be pissed. Especially since we were able to do that back in Pikmin 3, over 10 years ago. The last Nintendo issue I'm going to talk about is online. 
Pikmin 5 needs online. Because after I 100 percent in Pikmin 4, I might as well just sold it on Marketplace, because that game was pretty much useless to me. Oh, boo you. No, but seriously, if we could have played Dendori Battles online, Pikmin 4's lifespan would have lasted so much longer. Whatever versus or co-op mode we get in Pikmin 5, it needs to have online features. It's almost 2024, people practically live on the internet nowadays. And at the absolute bare minimum, at least give us leaderboards or something. It's genuinely pathetic how you can't enjoy Pikmin 4 with another person unless you're both in the same room. And even then, there's only so much you can do. But once again, this is more of a Nintendo issue over a Pikmin issue. Stepping away from the Nintendo issues, I really want to see every Pikmin type get some sort of rework in Pikmin 5. The Pikmin's abilities are all pretty standard. You use reds to fight fire, blues to go in the water, and whites to combat poison. And other than a few small abilities, the Pikmin types play pretty much the same. That's why even when there's hazards around, most people just use a team of purples and rocks and just call it a day because they can deal with it themselves. I made two separate videos giving more utility to each of the Pikmin types and I really hope Nintendo adds some sort of utility to make the Pikmin feel more diverse. White Pikmin should be able to shoot acid or what if blue Pikmin had the ability to trap their enemies in a bubble? Listen, all I'm saying is I want Nintendo to give me a proper reason to use different Pikmin types because I'm starting to get tired of only using purples. And yes, I know I have the option to use whatever Pikmin I want, but why would I if purples can just do it all? Backing up from the Pikmin and shifting more towards the enemies themselves, Pikmin 4 had the highest amount of enemies in any Pikmin game to this date, but am I the only one who thinks some of them felt... lazy? All of these big enemies just feel like reused models that got scaled up. There's like four Blowhogs that functionally work exactly the same. Five Dweevils that are basically just different colors, and an ungodly amount of Balborb clones. A YouTuber by the name of Periksom Party, sorry if I butchered that, has made some of the most well thought out and intricate Pikmin enemy designs that are still inspired by other creatures in the game, but still feel unique enough to be their own enemy. I really hope Nintendo takes this kind of approach when creating new enemies for Pikmin 5, because I swear to god, if I get another lackluster Blowhog, I'm gonna lose it. The final thing I want to see in Pikmin 5 is more in-depth boss fights. I'm so sick and tired of these so-called boss fights where all I have to do is run in a circle and mash the A button. I genuinely miss the grand multi-phase boss fights of Pikmin 3. Isn't a boss fight supposed to be difficult? Why do some run-of-the-mill enemies give me more trouble than a full-fledged boss? And boss fights don't just have to be combat related. The way the Plasma Wraith was handled in Pikmin 3 was perfect, in my opinion. It involves combat experience, puzzle solving, and strategic placement of Olimar all at the exact same time. And although it wasn't the most difficult thing we had to do in a Pikmin game, it forced you to utilize all the multitasking skills you'll learn throughout the whole of Pikmin 3. Pikmin 5 needs more experiences like this, where it actually challenges the player to use more than half a brain cell because it was severely lacking in Pikmin 4. As you can tell, I have some very high hopes for the Pikmin series because I truly believe it has so much potential to be one of Nintendo's heavy hitters. But if Pikmin keeps trying to stick to their old formulas, the series will get left in the past and die out. Pikmin 4 is a great step in the right direction, but I really think we have yet to see Pikmin's true potential. Hopefully next generation of consoles can fix that. But I want to know what you guys have to say. What's something you'd like to see in Pikmin 5? As always, I look forward to reading and discussing in the comments, so please, let me know what features you think would work well for Pikmin 5. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all very soon.